Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Ship Shape, the only show that introduces new spaceships, explores existing spaceships when they're implemented into the game, explores progress in the ship pipeline, has standalone episodes, has smaller update segments inside ATV, gets used as a lead-in for RTV, and eventually, someday, you know, maybe, we'll find out who the heck's running those captions that miss no opportunity to shame and disclaim. I bet he's doing it right now. I'm your host, content manager, Jared Huckabee. Now, on this episode of Ship Shape, I'm pleased to showcase a ship that was first introduced to the Star Citizen community about 10 months ago during our anniversary 2017 celebration. So what is it? With four of the most devastating advanced specialty turrets on its sides and then two more along the top and the bottom, the Aegis Hammerhead dote up on the scene promising to realize the full potential of turret gameplay in the Star Citizen universe. Now, What's really cool about this one is that it was built on an accelerated schedule that allowed us to utilize assets already completed for the Idris and Javelin ships, which were also from Aegis. Now let's check in now with some of the designers and artists that are currently working to bring this marvel of anti-fighter devastation to life. The Hammerhead kind of takes its name from the Hammerhead Shark. So you've got the, the sort of front armoured area. The original pitch called for a patrol boat with lots of turrets. It used to be the same size as the Retaliator. The idea was a Retaliator with no torpedoes and bigger turrets. And we found to accommodate the bigger turrets, we needed bigger power plants, therefore we needed a bigger engine room, therefore, therefore. So it got a bit chunkier, but still not too badly oversized for what it needs to do. The Hammerhead is primarily a support vessel. Its main purpose is to act as a defensive ship for larger ships of the fleet, such as the Idris, or space stations like Port Olisar. It's not a primary sort of cargo carrying ship or anything. It's equipped with uh, six turrets, each with four cannons. So you've got sort of a complete arc of, of fire on this ship. It just sort of allows it to sort of control an area completely. The difference with the turrets on this is that they're mounted differently. They're not just on top of like a socket that moves like that. They're on the sort of gimbal frame that extends out the side of the ship. In normal turrets, you would rotate with the turret and then the, the guns would pitch up and down. But with the hammerhead, the whole body of the turret will rotate and pitch. Being able to pitch the seat as well as the guns really does help with being able to control them better. It's a lot easier for players to see where they're aiming with it. So there's, there's literally nowhere a smaller ship can hide to get away from it. Um, so it's after, if it's after you, you're screwed kind of thing. We haven't tested this yet, but it could be really good against ground installations as well, because when it's coming down out of the sky, it looks quite intimidating, the shape of it. Like all, like five turrets can fire at the ground at once, so they can just like, buzz an area and just decimate it. It's quite slow, um, it's not as fast as some other ships, um, but it makes up for it in the fact that it can just sort of rain down as much pain as it wants to with, with all these guns. The default guns are the Klaus and Werner Rhino repeaters. I'm looking forward to seeing players switching them out for other types because there's a lot of options we can put on them. It obviously requires quite a large uh, crew complement as well because um, you've got to have all these man turrets sort of working for it to be effective. I'm looking forward to players just getting Gatlings on every hard point and just going mad with it. Getting the Hammerhead into the game, it would definitely be interesting seeing players with all the sort of turrets and everything to do. Bit of a challenge to set up, but we got there in the end and they've uh, actually come along quite well with how they uh, function. The interior for the Hammerhead takes a lot of assets and sort of cues from for the larger Aegis ships like the Idris and the Javelin, the things like the corridors. They're built using the Idris kits, but obviously we had to change the, the colours and the lighting and stuff um, just because we wanted a slightly different feel in it. We just wanted to make it sort of a little bit more military um, and not as sort of clean as the Idris one is. The challenge with using the Idris stuff, there's obviously not the same amount of space. So when we've got all the corridors in, we had to kind of wedge in all the other rooms and such. So a lot of the uh, components don't have their own rooms, they're part of the corridors. It started as one deck, um, but sort of halfway through the development cycle, we figured out that it needed a kitchen and it didn't have one. Um, and there was no free space on the, the first deck that we built. 
but we lowered the rear half to add in the top deck where the mess hall is. Um, which it just had just enough room uh, to get it in. And most of the main rooms in the ship, um, so the bridge, cargo bay, engineering rooms, stuff like that, they're, they are very much their own rooms. Uh, so yeah, they're very hammerhead based and, and not taken from the Idris in any way. In general, the, the ship is pretty durable. The whole front of the ship has got sort of like an armoured reinforced uh, section just to give it an extra base of durability if it does need to sort of just sort of go full frontal into a, a larger ship or something. For me personally, I really enjoyed working on the bridge um, just because of its, its sort of interesting shape and you've got the, the glass floor panel. In the concept art for it, um, originally that floor panel wasn't a floor panel, it was just another piece of glass um, but I basically uh, changed the uh, the design of it slightly so to basically allow you to walk on the the sort of glass floor panel so you can have the pilot and the co-pilot flying the ship um, and you can still have people walking around on this area um, and looking down on, on planets or a battle or anything um, in orbit that would be quite cool i think the aegis hammerhead is scheduled for release in the upcoming star citizen alpha 3.3 but you're not going to have to wait until then to learn even more about this ship that's because you can also check out the latest episode of Reverse to Burst Live, where we put questions to our developers directly from you, the Star Citizen community. Now you can either find that replay on YouTube, or if you're watching this live on Twitch, that starts in just a few minutes. So for ShipShape, I'm content manager for global video production, Jared Huckabee. Until next time, or again, in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.